Good day to you. My name is Maria Kondzielska and you're watching Poland Daily Culture. We're trying to portray to you the rich world of Polish fantasy and in this episode we'll talk about the most popular and then the number one among them and of course it is The Witcher of Andrzej Sapkowski. With us in the studio is Jakub Kondzielski, a graduate of English literature but also a fan of Polish fantasy. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. I would say there are very few uh, Polish uh, teenagers or people who growing up, growing up uh, who entered the world uh, of uh, without uh, reading uh, The Witcher or at least playing the game. So it becomes it is something which uh, shaped minds and generations of of young people in Poland. But uh, talking about the uh, talking about the game, it kind of um, remade the scene here or gave us all together a confidence that uh, we as Poles can do good video games. <clears throat> so uh, tell us what's the phenomenon of The Witcher. Well, The Witcher is a, is a computer game. It. Uh Right back from the 2007, it um, it was a great example of, of creating, of both adapting a, a, a work of fiction uh, into the gaming world and a great game on its own. It was an extremely difficult, you know, uh, feat to achieve because um, we all know the Witcher series. They're great. The CD Projekt story, which goes further than the books, uh, had to be created very carefully, and I, I think they they because they had to uh, take into account feelings who will uh, judge this continuation but it worked perfectly and it also per worked perfectly as a computer game you know pushing the limits of, of uh, Polish industry Polish game industry and uh, taking it to the to the levels of international uh, uh, companies uh, all over the world and you are yourself and I would say a very passionate gamer so <clears throat> tell us how uh, uh, how those the, well books which are changed to video games uh, so those video games what do they bring but more to the to the uh, I mean to the field and uh, are they uh, why are they also so attractive as a product of culture so games are uh, I think that this type of culture uh, cultural product that uh, becomes more and more uh, um, proficient today and and uh, attractive because um, they give you a sense of achievement so it's in the game mechanics, so to say. When you're reading a book, it is uh, a little bit less enjoyable because, well, you don't have this, this feeling that you have reached the next level. Perhaps when you reach the next chapter, but, you know, when you have a character, you see him change each certain stages, it, it's amazing. And this is, you know, something common with every type of game whether it's adventure games or, or logical games or, or games that are more similar than movies, you have this feeling of uh, identification with the main character. When you're reading The Witcher, you see this uh, adventures of Geralt, uh, but you're kind of the viewer, you're, you're a spectator. But when you're playing the games, you're making the decisions for yourself, you know, k kill a monster or spare him, maybe spare him. It is you who's making the choice. Although, of course, you know, consciously, you know that you're not the character of Geralt, but unconsciously, you kind of blend with this character. And this is something that uh, uh, books or movies, they, they don't give you. Well, they give you a certain amount, definitely, but not that much. Not that much. And you can, with games, you can truly tell moving stories by immer immersing the characters into a situation. And often those situations can be very difficult, but bring us closer to, for example, the, 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 the feeling of whether it's being a witcher or, I don't know, taking part in, in a war. Still, the first part of The Witcher and the second game were popular in Poland. So why yes. the third one uh, becomes an international success? Well, I think it's the matter of scope, because, uh, well, um, once it was kind of an investment uh, into the series. The first Witcher, Witcher uh, was, was a domestic success, the second as well, but only truly with the third one did the investment return money. And after the first two installments and, uh, uh, you know, game devs could truly create this huge, huge world. And this is the first thing. This game is, is very big. 
And this is great, you know, pe people love this. You could see a, a great deal of the Witcher world. You could revisit all of those characters. Uh, you had great writers creating this, uh, continuing this great story. You have uh, great performances, both in the Polish game and in the English game, because this is something also, uh, you know, uh, interconnected with the Polish game industry. It's great. Also, because we have great actors and great voice actors who deliver those performances. Uh, there was the, a great source material. Uh, uh, the technology would finally be advanced enough uh, in terms of the original uh, game en engine created by uh, CDPR, uh, which was finally, you know, perfected enough that they could deliver, deliver this great, great game. And, you know, it was a huge, huge payoff. And, of course, in the end, there's also a matter of publishing, which... Uh, or sorry, marketing, which I think kind of uh, needed to reach a, a certain limit to break this um, uh, kind of a curtain that is between us and, and the, the America and, and the rest of the world. And right now, every player in the world can uh, like sink in into the world of Polish fantasy due, due to the Witcher of Andrzej Sapkowski and, of course, due to the game. So to all of you, the viewers of Poland Daily, we strongly, of course, recommend to you to play the game, but, of course, also to read the book, because maybe if you're fans of the game, you will even get like deeper and you will get more fun out of reading the whole seven books of Andrzej Sapkowski, which are, after all, the crown jewel of the genre of Polish fantasy. And again, thank you for watching our show.